okay. Let's talk about genetic potential. What is your genetic potential? What are your genetic limits? First off, there is a huge range of genetic potential potential for holding on to lean muscle mass and having a muscular build. I'm going to mostly talk about in terms of building muscle, not really about strength or performance. So your genetic potential in terms of building muscle and having a, a muscular physique, all right? And there is a definite huge distribution and range. So it's something to keep in mind. However, I've noticed that a lot of people will use that as a crux or an excuse for why they can't achieve a certain result. And my advice to you, if you're really focused on your genetic limits, your genetic potential, you're trying to determine what it is. You're like, I can't reach that level. I can't do that. I see that person on social media. There's no way I'll look like that, whatever, whatever. Here's what I think you should focus on. Here's how I think you should look at it. Number one, most people, what the common view of what your genetic potential is, is very skewed because there's not a necessarily extremely dedicated, extreme approach that most people take on. So most people think their genetic potential is way less than it actually is. And what I mean by that is if you follow all of the regular, like recommended things for working out, like you do a regular split, like push, pull legs and you do, you know, the, the X amount of volume that you're supposed to do. You stay in the eight to 15 rep range. You train two failures. Sometimes you do all these like recommended things that will get you Uh, a good amount of progress and that will get you to the limit of what that training ideology is going to be capable of. And to break beyond that is not necessarily a genetic limit, but a, a mental ideological limit. So what I'm saying is if you're married to a certain way of training and a certain set of rules, there is going to be a limit of results that any given person may achieve. And people will still achieve different results within that based on their genetic potential and and their habits and their lifestyle and many other factors. But what most people misplace their physical limits for is actually your mental and ideological limits. And to continue to see progress, I think once you get to a certain point and if you're in this boat and you think, okay, I've hit my genetic limit, There's additional progress you can make by busting out of the rules and the mental uh, governors or limitations that you've put on your training. So for example, take take my, my case with trying to grow up my arms, I followed all the regular rules, you know, train, rest like two to three days in between, you know, do like, I don't know, six, eight sets per workout use the regular rep range, use the general rest times, focus on progressive overload, all these like kind of general fundamentals. And that got me to like 16 and a half inches and they're over 18 inches now. And I was like completely plateaued. So I could have easily gone, this is my genetic potential. No, this is my potential based on thinking about training this way and following all these recommendations and rules. And what I did when I got to that point, I was like, I'm stuck in a plateau. I'm not getting anywhere. Let me just start trying shit that isn't recommended because maybe it'll lead to additional progress. One of the main things, it's a good example, is I started training more often. Instead of training and resting like two, three, four days, I started training and just resting two days. I did that for six months. And then I started training every other day. And then for a period, I actually started training every day. Sounds insane. You're not supposed to do that. You're going to overtrain. You're going to hurt yourself. What I've found is that as you get more experience, and if you feel like you're bumping up against your genetic potential, there are actually additional gains you can make by progressively making your training more extreme, doing more frequency, training more often, adding more volume, doing more sets, adding more intensity, pushing further and further into failure and beyond using intensity techniques like drop sets, um, changing up the tempo, um, and consistently analyzing your training and, and paying attention to how your body responds and then finding ways to go, how can I make this harder? How can I make this harder? How can I make this more intense? Can I add more sets? Should I take less rest days? Should I change the tempo? Should I change the rep range? Should I do longer rest times or shorter rest times? Keep trying different stuff. I don't want to get too far into the weeds because the general theme is if you look at your training and just say, how can I make it more difficult? pretty much universally, I've found that to lead to more results as long as you do it progressively over time. And I've never really found this like overtraining. I think the overtraining thing is extremely overhyped. If you do gradually continue to up your physique or up your training, you're putting greater and greater stimulus and stress on your body and demanding more growth. And so my point is, is that if you stay within a certain set of rules or beliefs of how you're supposed to train, 
where your genetic potential lies is going to be different than if you bust out of that. And it's not for everybody because you're going to have to experiment. You're going to have to start doing more and more extreme shit. But if you really want it, your genetic potential actually lies way further down the road in 18 inch arms. Whereas for me, if I was um, adhering to the general consensus of how I should train the way most people do, my genetic potential would have been 16 and a half inch arms, which is significantly smaller. I never would have got them, never would have gained those additional one and a half inches. So what I would like you to take from this is to realize that your mind, yes, there is a, a variability of results people can achieve. Some people have really good genetics. Some people have really bad genetics. Even if you have really bad genetics, where your genetic potential actually is, is really fucking far away. If you actually start checking all the boxes of escalating your training to make it more and more extreme, dialing in your sleep, dialing in your diet, like doing literally everything you could do. Think about it. Even if you did every single, and I'm not doing every single thing, like every single thing you could do and maximizing all of the effort was what you can control. You can't control your genetics where you could actually get to is like pretty fucking impressive. Right. And so the point that I would make from that then is that it's never useful really to say, okay, I can never do that because of my genetic potential. The one case where I think it is, is if you're exposing yourself to a lot of people who have amazing physiques going, okay, they obviously have elite level genetics. And then my advice would be stop looking at them and just focus on you and your, your process and your progress. Cause you can make progress from where you are to where you could, where, how you could improve. Even if you have bad genetics, you can progress, but your ceiling may just be lower than somebody who has really good genetics. But overall, what, is limiting more people than their genetics is their mindset around training and, and accountability and analyzing what they're doing and realizing that, okay, like, I mean, my body is not necessarily as much of a limiter as my mind is. And there's a, obviously there's a limit to what you can do. And there is a genetic limit that you could reach, but almost nobody actually gets there. So my takeaway point for you is that don't point to your genetics for why you can't do some, why you can't see progress, why you can't improve. Um, because I almost guarantee that you're not fucking doing everything that you could. You haven't turned over every stone. You haven't been willing to put in the work, willing to escalate your training further and further, willing to try all this different shit and experiment, go through all the pain, up the intensity, sacrifice, never miss meals, always go to bed on time. Like you're not doing all that stuff. So your genetic potential hasn't been reached and it's just not a useful thought process. It's not really going to help you, right? It's not really going to help you improve. Ultimately, this is about improving from where you are to, uh, a better state and anyone can do that regardless of where you're, where you lie on the genetic distribution of to elite genetics, to bad genetics. Um, yeah. So I think that I got the point across. So I hope that that helps you in your approach. I hope you can use that mentality with your training and the way that you approach, um, trying to reach your goals. And, uh, I hope that it impacts you in a positive way. Have a great day.